Kulik and Sofa, a company that deals with creating equipment needed for the advanced packaging in semiconductors, just reported earnings. And it seems like the company's revenue is down 55% year over year. Luckily, I have Billy here to tell me a little bit more of what's happening. Good morning, Billy. How's it going? Good morning, Jose. Uh... So, so, Billy, it's pretty interesting. I mean, we see revenue down 55%. We see adjusted earnings per share down 81%. But yet, these are beating analyst expectations. So, are things better than expected for, for this company? Yes. So, better than expected, even though the headline looks terrible. Um one thing to know about these um, packaging equipment companies, uh, especially Kulik and Sofa, because they have a, a lot of legacy ball bonder revenue that makes up a majority of their revenue. It's very cyclical, like very cyclical. And they had a massive boom during both 2021 and 2022, fiscal 2021 and 2022. Uh like the biggest boom in their history. And now we have a pretty big downturn. However, uh, although a lot of their revenue comes from legacy ball bonder packaging, which is like the traditional workhorse of packaging components on a motherboard, this company is innovating in advanced packaging techniques, which are just like thermal compression bonding and heterogeneous integration which is just beginning to be used in advanced um, chip making, uh, such as chiplets and uh, leading edge. Kulik and Sofas also has a growing business in micro and mini LED, uh, which is the latest technology for LED screens. And then they also have a pretty solid um, auto and industrial business. And we'll see the segments in the next slide, but um, obviously LEDs, you know, no one's investing in expanding LED production right now. Consumer electronics are in some of their worst downturns ever. So it's not surprising to see sort of the general semiconductor assembly equipment basically going down to like almost nothing. But uh, some of these other segments are actually, you know, that make up a le less amount of their business are actually doing okay and starting to take off. So we'll see that. So Revenue was down 55%, which beat expectations, and adjusted EPS was down 81%, which beat expectations. Uh, the company is very cheap. The stock is very cheap, and they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. So uh, in encouraging was that management says last quarter was the trough of the cycle, they believe, um, but that the recovery would be sort of slower than they thought it would be earlier this year. They guided for about 10% sequential growth next quarter. And then they thought the September quarter would be another 10% growth on top of that based on the orders that are starting to come in. So, you know, we had this huge boom and then we had inflation and central banks hiking interest rates and uh, PCs are in, and smartphones are in some of their worst downturns ever. So it's not surprising that uh, we have a big downturn. Uh, in terms of their newer segments that are growth businesses, um, when I talked about advanced packaging in another seg recent segment. Uh, management did note that they had record revenue in this quarter for their thermo compression bonding machines in Q2. Uh, and those are, you know, some of the, uh, that go into the most advanced leading edge chips and chiplets that we talked about in an earlier segment. Uh, they think they're gonna have about 68 million in 2023 thermocompression bonding revenues. They had about 20 million in last quarter out of 33.7 million of total advanced packaging revenue. Uh, so they have a couple technologies in advanced packaging. Thermocompression bonding seems to be where they um, have, are, have most of their concentration so if they do 68 million in 2023, that'll probably be like high single digits portion of their revenue now coming from advanced packaging. And again, Kulik and Sofa, um, unlike some of its competitors, they dominate like the legacy advanced packaging uh, machines that are pretty much just needed for industry volumes, which boomed the last couple of years. Um, but 
I'm very focused on these newer advanced packaging uh, techniques. And the quote from management um, was asked about whether thermal compression bonding is going to win out over some of these other techniques of hybrid bonding. And uh, the CEO, Fuzin Chen, said multiple packaging technologies such as hybrid bonding, thermal compression bonding, and now there are many technologies that can coexist. So at this moment, the hybrid bonding and our TCB are really not competing. I thought that was interesting. And in certain technologies, they can coexist. So it just goes to show you that the advanced packaging industry is evolving and innovating very quickly. And some of these technologies have to work in concert in order to progress Moore's law. Um, you know, it, as it becomes harder and harder to get transistors closer together, companies are going to have to start going vertical and or using chiplets and tiles. And that's going to require more of these highly precise advanced packaging techniques. So that, I thought that was an interesting takeaway um, from this earnings. And, um, and if you're interested in Kulik and Sofa's business, if you just go to the next slide, they do some- like, one, one question. Oh, go ahead. Here, here Billy, before, um, I want to say- it Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick five-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join the private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. It, looking at their, they mentioned that they believe they're going to see $68 million in um, thermal compression bonding revenue for the full year of 2023. But in quarter two, they already saw about twenty million from there. Uh, so, do it, was this just a really strong quarter for them? And then, how, did, did they mention how? I mean, because that's already w roughly one third of what they expect um, for the full year came in this quarter. Um, right. right. How, how, do you know how quarter one was? Was it pretty much non-existent, and they pretty much believe that the rest is going to come evenly uh, across the other two quarters? I'm not exactly sure what they did in their first. So their fiscal year ends at the end of August. So we're already halfway through. And obviously, if you did starting to ramp, I think they projected some modest sequential growth next quarter and the quarter after. First quarter was probably much lower than that because those are just beginning to those technologies are just beginning to ramp. So they might not have done very much in the first fiscal quarter. Um, I don't believe. Uh, I'd have to go back to see if they mentioned that in their pre prior quarter transcript. And then they suspect that 2024 will be higher than 2023. Um, 2023 is a difficult year, obviously, for the whole industry. So as you can see, they um, teased out some of their segments here. So you had general semiconductor, which I guess is legacy as well as advanced packaging. Then you have the LED business, auto and industrial, and then memory. And you can just see how big the declines are, especially in the LED and the memory um, uh, portion of the business, just like enormous declines there. Uh, General Semi is also down, but actually last quarter was a little bit of sequential growth, you can see, and that might be the advanced mm -hmm. packaging revenue coming through because I think the legacy stuff is still in the doghouse. Um, also, if you look again with the theme that we've seen, auto and industrial, pretty resilient. Like it's down a little bit, but not that much. And then their services revenue, you know, which is tied a lot to the installed base and utilization, it's down, but not by nearly as much. So that just gives you a flavor. And then actually, if you look, memory is up quarter over quarter as well, even mm -hmm. though it's at super low levels. And we all know the problems going on in the uh, memory industry with huge oversupply. Um, so, oh yeah, and this, it looks like management thinks they have share gains in high performance computing uh, with advanced packaging. They're executing margin enhancement strategy. So they're looking to 
Um, they're also coming out with new ball bonders later this year, they said. That should be higher margin. So basically updated versions of their legacy workhorse products. Um, the LED thing, you know, obviously the LED industry in general is in a huge recession, but uh, they have an engagement with a very large customer that I don't know for sure, but I think is Apple on a project for micro and mini LED technology, which is the most advanced technology. It's it's not in your phones yet, but it could be in sort of advanced uh, tablets and televisions in the next couple of years and maybe eventually in your phone. Uh, Auto and industrial resilient, obviously the growth of EVs and um, their services, they said automotive advanced packaging again, and power semi um, improved, you know, we're, we're able to keep the, uh, the services and aftermarket um, mitigate the rest of the downturn in the business. So this uh, hopefully is, is a cyclical bottom as management says, um, just for reference, the stock trades, what is it at like 47 or 48? Um, but the company also has about 12 or $13 per share in cash on its balance sheet and no debt. Um, and so it's, and they, in, at the height of the boom, they, I think they earned like over $8 a share or something. So it, like if you strip out the cash, they were trading at like four times earnings or something at the peak. But now you know why it was so cheap because this downturn is super violent. Um, <laughs> so they'll trade at 40, four times earnings at the top and then like 40 times earnings at the bottom. So um, it's a difficult stock to value because it's so cyclical, but they have a lot of cash and they did buy, about, buy back a fair amount of stock over the past year, although not last quarter. Um, so this is this is one for value investors if you're into real cheap stocks uh, and don't mind playing. Yeah, I see it comes with a dividend yield as well. Yeah, it's over 1%. It's not bad. It's uh, mm -hmm. They increased their dividend recently. Um, again, they, they like to have that big cushion of cash. And they actually just made a tuck-in acquisition that they just closed a dispense business, which I think is going to help um, the LED business further. So it, this is going to be interesting because they have super cyclical legacy bonding business, but then they have all these smaller businesses that should have a lot of growth in the years ahead with advanced packaging, the mini and micro LED, and then some of these tuck-in acquisitions that they're making. So interesting company. Definitely one for value investors to look at, and um, we'll see how their advanced packaging machines compete with like BE Semiconductor, which does this almost exclusively, and some of the others. But it looks like they should have at least some of that market. So this is an, this is an interesting one. Definitely, Billy. I mean, I really enjoy management for kind of giving this um, breakdown here in revenue more importantly kind of giving those five-year average uh i think it kind of helps you understand a little bit more of how the market has transformed i mean the auto industrial look at that that has grown dramatically i'm, I'm uh, mm -hmm. insane compared to this five-year average and that's what we're seeing a lot from these semiconductor companies what i'm also happy about is again i don't f i don't have this stock but looking at it their auto and industrial market seems to become a now a more important portion of the company's total revenue Obviously, it might be coming from the other players kind of decreasing, but overall, it does seem to be healthy. I was shocked, Billy, to kind of see that memory market, see a nice, a little sequential growth bump. Um, I, I wouldn't have expected that, um, especially if the LED, I think both of those are really tied into like that consumer space. So it's weird to kind of see the LED market down sequentially, but the memory market seeing a nice bump up, um, but then compared compare those to those five-year averages it kind of just gives you the opportunity that hey once this market comes and picks back up um there's a high probability that these revenues are going to jump uh jump up a nice amount there's plenty of room for them to grow uh, and then the general semi it, it even though it took a huge hit from 2022 
that sequential growth, I think, would also have got me um, it give me some positiveness on on the overall long term of the stock. Yeah. Uh, so, Billy, how did the stock uh, react after earnings? Let me, um, if you might. It didn't do very much. Remember, it's uh, yeah, the stock ha- is up on the year. It started the year in the low forties, uh, went up to a high in the high fifties, and now it's sort of back in the high forties. So, so it looks like it's up about ten percent on the year. Um, mm-hmm. It. Uh, yeah, it troughed back in, you know, with the rest of the semiconductor market back in September, October, in the high 30s, I would say. Um, but again, so just to give you a reference, so they, this is a market cap of $2.65 billion, but I believe they have $750 million in cash on their balance sheet and no debt. <laughs> so it's an EV of you know, less than 2 billion. Um, and I would uh, say that's pretty impressive that they don't have a form of debt. I feel like certain semiconductors in this market tend to, um, tend to at least maintain a nice amount of debt on their balance sheet. So that alone is pretty impressive. Well, I think they're very aware of the extreme cyclicality of their business and they built that up to be pretty conservative. Um, as you can see, even though they were free cash flow positive, even in the most recent quarter, you know, there's still positive net earnings and free cash flow. They do have the dividend they have to pay out, but, mm-hmm. uh, they're very, yeah, I think, um, I think they probably had some investors hounding them for more, you know, using some of that cash more. And they did repurchase a, f- a decent amount of stock, um, in the last year, they probably, probably like a high single digit portion of their shares they retired without really dipping into that cash um, pile very much. So it seems like they're very comfortable with that 700 million there or so. But, um, you know, whether one day maybe they'll feel the business is more stable as these other technologies ramp up and maybe they'll feel more comfortable kind of returning the more of that cash to shareholders. But as of now, you know, I think it's probably a good idea to be somewhat conservative. You're probably getting a decent yield on short-term cash right now. You're probably getting 5%. So not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like I've been seeing a little bit more of companies in their balance sheets kind of increasing the amount of kind of just regular treasury rates. Um, opposed to increasing maybe some other investments as like you mentioned that 5% yield or so yeah. um, it's looking a lot a, a lot more attractive compared to maybe some other investments so Billy appreciate this any final thoughts before we close out the the topic um not really this is a stock I own um, um, right around these levels actually and uh, I'm pretty optimistic that long term this is going to do pretty well as long as I think packaging intensity continues to go up in the industry. That being said, very cyclical when the industry has a cycle and we're in a, we're in a doozy right now for sure.